Hello and welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is Mike Donnelly. I am a senior consultant here at Pragmatic Works. And today I want to talk about uh, running an Azure Databricks notebook using Azure Data Factory. If you're familiar with Databricks, you know that you can run uh, notebooks using different contexts. I'll be using the Python context for the example today, and you can do something simple like we're going to show, um, but you can also do a lot more complex things. But uh, example today, we have a file out on Azure Storage. We're going to read it in using Spark, and then uh, we're going to transform the data very insignificantly just to kind of show how it works. Now, maybe you already have something you're running like that and you need to run it uh, in an automated fashion. Data Factory is a pretty straightforward way to incorporate that in. You've got analysts doing uh, some great uh, data science and the end result is something you want to start productionizing. So you can pull that into your ETL pipelines and run that notebook as part of your ETL solution. A little bit of setup uh, for the demo we're going to show. Uh, you do have to have an average storage account, and because we want to connect Databricks to that storage account, we're using the access key, and we're going to store that in Key Vault, and we're going to connect a secret scope to the Key Vault to get our access key for storage, and then we're going to mount that Azure Blob storage in Databricks using the Databricks file system. And we have an Azure Data Factory resource set up with the linked service to the Databricks workspace already. With all of that set up, we can do a quick demo showing how to run uh, Azure Data Factory pipeline with a Databricks notebook task. Okay, and we have our notebook that we're gonna run and it's very simple. Uh, we've got using the Databricks utilities widget, uh, we're going to create a parameter called file name, which we'll be able to pass from Data Factory. And we use that file name to map to a file out on our mounted uh, blob storage container, which is AED is the name of the, that we gave that mount. And we'll read that in using the Spark read. It's a CSV file. We'll display it, do a very simple transformation, and then display it again. And we don't have any uh, cluster that we're going to run this in Databricks. We are going to run it purely through Data Factory. So, as I said, we have our Data Factory pipeline all set up out there, and we're going to use the Databricks task to run a notebook. You can also run a jar file or a Python script uh, directly without having it in a notebook. So, the first thing we need to do is we need to connect it using our Databricks linked service. And as I said, I already have that set up out here. And when you go in to set that up, that is a compute linked service, not uh, data. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And you need to put in your workspace URL, the access token, which can be found in your user settings uh, in Databricks. And you need to set up your cluster version, your node type, Python version, and the number of workers. This is all because we're going to allow it to create a new job cluster every time we run this. And it creates it once and never uses it again. And you just pay for the amount of time that it was running. You can connect to an existing interactive cluster. Maybe you've got uh, special libraries or special configuration that you want to set up, or you don't want to wait for the new cluster to be created in startup when this runs. It does happen in just a couple minutes, but that is something to consider. So we have that. If we go back up. So now that we have that already, our linked service, when we go into settings to find our notebook, we can just browse and it connects automatically out to our notebooks that we have. And that's the one we want to run. Now we do need to add in the file name and the very original name of our file is data.csv. And this does have to be the same name as the parameter that we put at the beginning of our notebook. And that is all we have. We can publish that, publishing those changes, and then we can run it. And we can go down here and monitor that run. Now, that's going to take a few minutes, like I said, to start up the cluster. So let's look at the previous run. I ran this right before we started, the exact same thing. And you can see we're passing in our parameter. You can see the successful run. 
and how long it took, and then the output is actually links to the Databricks job output. And this was our successful run, and you can see we passed in the parameter, dbutils, reads in the file out on blob storage, CSV file, and displays it, just a simple uh, file with some to-do items and the percent complete. And then we do a very simple transformation to change the scale of our percents to be zero to one instead of zero to 100. And it displays it in a graph because I chose graph last time I looked at it. Now we can see real quick that that was job 12 that ran. And you can see job 13 is just now starting up and it'll do the exact same thing. And that's how you run a Databricks notebook using Azure Data Factory. If you want to discuss Azure Databricks in more detail or have any questions on Azure at all, um, reach out to Pragmatic Works. And thank you very much. Thank you.